and welcome to Veterans Medals Workshop. I'm Frank Foster, your host, and today we have a really great show on the shoulder sleeve insignia of the 1st Infantry Division during the Vietnam War. Of course, we're going to show you how it evolved over 100 years, and then we're going to take a look at the division's distinctive unit insignia, the UI or unit crest, and tell you about the symbolism of it. But even better, we're going to take a look at the crest of all of the infantry battalions, artillery battalions, support battalions, and aviation that served with the division during the Vietnam War. I don't think you'll see it anywhere else. Uh, I think you'll enjoy this. And uh, special thanks to Medals of America and Fountain in South Carolina for supporting us with this and for many of the patches. And, well, if you enjoy these, please give us a like, or even better, subscribe. It'll keep us on the air. All right, enough talk. Let's go take a look. The 1st Infantry Division was alerted for Vietnam in 1965 and it arrived in Vietnam, or the first elements of it did, on the 2nd of October in 1965. And it was initially in the Three Corps Tactical Zone. Uh, by 1966, it was in the Binh Long Province fighting against the 9th Viet Cong Division and then later moved to Nha Tinh Province. And then after that, it was in Operation Attleboro and Junction City with the 4th and 25th Division. And in the fall of 67, it went into the Loch Ninh area of Ben Long Province, uh, fighting against enemy attacks on the towns there. During Tet, the offensive of 1968, the division fought in the Saigon vicinity. And then it moved to La Key in March of 1968 and stayed there working on pacification activities. And in 1969, the Big Red One soldiers began a really great effort between their division and the South Vietnamese 5th Division called Progress Together, an attempt to train the Arvin soldiers in combat operations. The division departed in April 1970 after almost four and a half years of continuous combat. The 1st Infantry Division shoulder sleeve insignia was established in 1918 and a World War I example is shown on your left. Then between 1919 and 1938, the variations continued until you see the dark green one in the very center. And that was in 1958 when the Army made a major redesign of uniforms and the standard dress uniform became green for both officers and enlisted and so did the background of the patch. The patch to the right of a dark green patch was a new patch in 1963 that used the overlock or mirrored stitch for the patch borders. Then due to the jungle fighting in Vietnam, the use of a subdued or black and dark khaki replacing the bright and colorful section of the patch came about for field wear. The color patch was retained for dress use. However, as usual, in Vietnam, many small units and individuals wanted their patches made locally, and they wanted the big red one on there, and here's an example of a Vietnamese locally made patch. It's almost a throwback to the 1918 example. Just as a quick refresher of a unit, your serving with patch goes on the left sleeve as shown here, and then after combat, you can wear it on the right sleeve to indicate you served with the 1st Infantry Division in combat. The division has a handsome distinctive unit insignia or unit crest. It's an oval shaped gold colored metal and enamel device consisting of a gold colored metal background encircled by an elliptical band divided horizontally of red to the top and blue to the base. And inscribed on the blue is the motto victory in gold colored letters. Centered on the device is a figure from the 1st Infantry Division's monument modeled in gold color with the wings and upraised arms extending over the red portion of the band. The colors red and blue are from the distinguishing flags of the infantry divisions. The figure portion is that of the 1st Infantry Division monument located in Washington, D.C. Now let's take a look at the symbolism of a unit crest of the nine infantry battalions that served in Vietnam for, well, four and a half years. Starting on your left is the unit crest of the 1st and 2nd Battalion of the 2nd Infantry Regiment. And it's a unique unit crest because it reflects service in the Civil War as shown by the blue cross from the Confederate flag and the red cross which was the badge of the 18th Corps 5th Division of the Union Army. It showed service in the Mexican War by the Cactus and the war in Spain with the 5 Basin badge of the 5th Corps in Cuba. The Indian campaigns of the regiments are shown by the arrow and the quivers, and the bolo is for service in the Philippine insurrection. Pretty neat, huh? The unit crest is that of a 1st and 2nd Battalion of the 16th Infantry Regiment, and the symbolism is also unique. The shield is 
white and blue from the arms of Faville, France, where the regiments took its objective in the Argonne operation in World War I. The crossed arrows in the bolo recall the Indian and Philippine fighting in the Five Basin Fort. That was a badge of the V Corps in Cuba. The unit crest of the 1st and 2nd Battalion of the 18th Infantry Regiment is unique. Its Civil War service is shown by, well, the example of the Confederate Cross, and then the crossed arrows represent the regiment's Indian campaign, and the old 8th Corps badge, which is on the lower left, shows service in the Spanish War, while the BOLO stands for operations in the Philippine insurrection. In World War I, the regiment was awarded two French Croix de Guerre with Palm and the French Bourget for its service during the Lorraine Offensive and its capture of Hill 240 in the old province of Lorraine. It also bears some of the fluidities of the arms of France. The unit insignia of the 1st Battalion, 26th Infantry, is unique for its simplicity. It's a white shield with gold trim with a blue Indian arrowhead on it. And the arrowhead, the Mohawk arrowhead in the center of the insignia, was the regimental insignia during World War I, and it was personally selected by Colonel Hamilton A. Smith as an indication of American virtues and a regimental spirit of courage, resourcefulness, and relentless pursuit of the enemy. Colonel Smith was killed while leading the regiment in its first great offensive. And the final crest is that of the 1st Battalion, 28th Infantry Regiment. When the regiment was organized in 1901, the color of infantry facings was white, which was taken for the color of the shield. The black rampant line came from the coat of arms of one of the French cities that the regiment captured during World War I. A nice example of a combat infantryman from the 1st Battalion, 26th Infantry Regiment using both his 1st Infantry Division shoulder sleeve insignia and his 26th Infantry Regiment unit crest along with his ribbons and medals. Well, if the infantry is the queen of battle, then truly the artillery is the king of battle. And let's take a look at the five artillery battalions that served four and a half years in the 1st Infantry Division. The crest on your left is that of a 1st Battalion, 5th Artillery. The scarlet and yellow are the colors used for artillery, and the five arrows allude to the Indian Wars. The broken arrow commemorates the battle near Vincent, Indiana, on 4 November 1791, in which all of the officers and two-thirds of the men were killed. The Liberty Bell is symbolic of a Revolutionary War, and the Lorraine Cross refers to World War I. The embattled petition lines symbolize the ramparts of, well, in Mexico, and the pair of cannons representing the Civil War depicts the Battle of Newmarket. The unit crest of the 8th Battalion, 6th Artillery, is unique in that the symbolism uh, represents the original coat of arms of the form of 6th Field Artillery and 6th Coastal Artillery, and it's been retained just as much as possible. The order on the shield represents the oldest service at the top and the most recent at the bottom. The rattlesnakes for service in the Mexican War. The six rattles represent the numerical designation of both units. The cross sabers represent Civil War service. And the star represents service in the Philippine insurrection, while the two fluid lids represent service in World War I and II. The motto translates to swift and bold. There are several variations of the 1st of the 7th Field Artillery Unit crest, but it's basically a combination of the original insignia of the 7th Field Artillery and the 7th Coastal Artillery. The symbolism of the unit crest of the 6th Battalion of the 15th Artillery reflects the fact that it was formed in 1917 by a transfer of men from the 4th Field Artillery, and that's the old 4th Field Artillery crest up in the upper left-hand corner. The wavy lines represent the fighting in World War I, and the number of rivers that the battalion pantsed until it finally crossed the Rhine. You have to love a unit crest of the 2nd Battalion of the 33rd Field Artillery because, well, the colors are red and yellow to identify the organization as artillery. The lion, although it looks like it's asleep, is said to sleep with its eyes open, although on the crest they appear to be shut. And, well, what it means is it's ever on guard and ready for any emergency in action. And the translation of a Latin crest means it will keep, I will keep the faith. I think that's a good translation. Very nice example of a red leg from the first of the seventh field artillery using his unit crest along with his uh, shoulder sleeve insignia and his ribbons and medals to indicate his service in Vietnam.
This former battery commander in the second of a 33rd field artillery was obviously proud of his unit because he had an oversized crest made to go into his display case. In addition to the infantry and the artillery, I would be remiss if I didn't take a look at some of the division's other elements such as aviation and support, so let's do that right now. Starting on your left is an example of a 1st Aviation Regiment, the 2nd Battalion, the 1st Infantry Division Aviation Section, the 1st Infantry Division 1st Aviation Regiment called the Gunfighters, and the 1st Infantry Division Aviation Regiment symbol, the Flying Best. And then you, you gotta love the 162nd Aviation Company, the Vultures. And you can see that this Spec 5 kept his patch of the vultures and placed it in the place of honor in his awards display case. The 1st Engineer Battalion not only got to build things and blow things up, but it also had to clear them before it blew them. Let's take a look at the 1st Infantry Division support battalions. Starting on your left is an example of the 16th Armored Cavalry Regiment C Troop and the 1st Squadron 4th Cavalry Regiment. The 1st Engineer Battalion, that's the anchor with the crossed oars, don't ask me the symbolism of that one. The 1st Medical Battalion, then the 1st Supply and Transportation Battalion, the 121st Signal Battalion, and the 701st Maintenance Battalion, along with, of course, the 1st Infantry Division MP Company. And then you've got to love it, the 1st Infantry Division Party Patch. No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today on Veterans Medals Workshop when we took a good look at the distinctive unit insignia or unit crest of the 1st Infantry Division during the Vietnam War. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the look at the different infantry battalions and artillery battalions and support forces. If you did, please give us a like or even better, subscribe. Look forward to having you next time with us on Veterans Medals Workshop. Until then, be safe. If you want to see more Army patches and unit crests, check out our video at Veterans Medals Workshop on the U.S. Military Patch Guide Review.